I turned the corner as fast as I could, but the scary men in dark suits were still behind me. I couldn't let them catch me. I had the fate of the world on my shoulders. Well, actually, it was around my neck in a butterfly locket that held the super secret code to a powerful weapon that had to be protected at all costs. Hi, my name is Grace, and I'm a super secret that's classified. Let's just say I have a special set of skills. But before I continue, please like and subscribe. I darted into the subway and raced down the stairs just as the train slid into the station. The men were right behind me, yelling for me to stop. Sorry, suckers. Better luck next time. I hopped on the train, raced down the aisle, and bumped into the most beautiful boy I'd ever seen. His face screamed perfection. He had the body of an action star, and his smile could melt the polar ice caps. My special AI glasses analyzed him in half a second. His name was Nate. He was the quarterback of his high school football team, and his dad was a successful businessman. He seemed too good to be true. And then he opened his mouth. Hey, sweet thing. Yeah, I know I'm handsome. I'm a perfect 10. No, an 11. Maybe a 12. I'm the best looking guy you've ever seen. Am I right? Nate pulled out a marker and started signing his name on my arm. What the heck are you doing? You don't want my autograph? I'm a famous football star. At least I will be in a couple years. Though the way you're looking at me makes me think I might be the man of your dreams. You're pretty cute too. I mean, pretty and cute. Both? Get it? Suddenly, I saw the angry men in black suits running down the aisle headed in my direction. The last thing I needed was to get caught with the necklace, so I pulled Nate into a kiss, distracted him, and quickly slipped it into Nate's backpack. Wow, that was intense. Well, what can I say? I'm an intense person. Oh, this was fun. See you never. Bye. Saying that, I just ran. Just as I'd expected, the men rushed past Nate and didn't give him a second look. I raced off the train and into the crowded station and got out of there undetected. When I walked into headquarters, Agent Mama Bear ran up to me screaming, Where is the necklace? I had to stash it with a civilian. A civilian? Are you crazy? What are you thinking? If Mr. X gets to him before we do, that poor civilian is toast. Hello, the bad guys were tailing my butt, and I didn't want the necklace on me in case they caught me. I was thinking on my feet, and it seemed logical at the time. The president should be thanking me. Actually, he should put my name in the super secret agent handbook. I knew you were too young for this mission. I can fix this. I'll just get the locket back. Fine, this is your last chance. Hold on, I can see you guys are confused. Mr. X is actually a criminal mastermind who stole a super secret government weapon, but he can't use it because it works on a code that's hidden in a butterfly locket that I stole from a secret underground bunker. And now Mr. X wants to catch me, take the code, and sell the weapon to a group of evil men that are up to no good. You get the drill, right? After getting my butt kicked at the headquarters, I went straight to Nate's house to scope things out. But his mansion was like Fort Knox. There were guards everywhere. I couldn't risk the mission, so I decided that the only way to get closer to Nate and his backpack was to go undercover. I'd pose as a high school student, find Nate, snatch his backpack, and grab the necklace. The whole thing would be a piece of cake. The next morning, Agent Mama Bear enrolled me into Nate's school. The moment I stepped on campus, I was on a hunt to find Nate. But every time I tried to get near him, he was surrounded by an army of lovesick girls. Nate, you're so strong and your muscles are so big. I know. I go to the gym every day. Your eyes are so perfect, Nate. Thanks. I use a special kind of eye drops that Robert Pattinson used in his vampire movie. That's why his eyes were shining so much. He winked. A couple of girls cheered and some begged him to take a selfie. I wanted to barf. A couple of hours later, I saw Nate alone at his locker. He had his backpack on, but it was zipped shut. So I crept over like a cat burglar and reached for the zipper. Just as I was about to open it, Nate turned around. Our faces were inches apart. He looked at me with his dreamy brown eyes, and I swear I heard angels singing. Then some kid ran by and bumped into me. I lost my balance, fell forward, and suddenly my lips were on Nate's. And then we were kissing. You really can't seem to get enough of me, do you? That was a mistake. I, I have to run. Not so soon. I'm not letting you get away this time. How about you be my girlfriend? We can kiss all the time, and you can stop playing this game. I don't have time for games. You have something of mine, and I need it back. Did I steal your heart? Well, baby, you stole mine, too. Enough of this. You're wasting my time. Just as I was about to snatch his backpack and grab the locket, this rich girl named Pam walked up with her minions and two burly bodyguards. She was the spoiled daughter of a rich politician. Pam shoved past me so hard I almost lost my balance. Hey, jerk, you pushed me. That's what I mostly do with garbage. Is this street rat bothering you, Nate? If she is, I can tell my guards to send her away. She's not a street rat. She's a nice girl. We met on the subway. The subway? Yeah, it's this thing underground. People use it for transportation. It's been around for over 100 years. Duh, I know that. It's just disgusting. How many times must I tell you, Nate, you shouldn't hang out with peasants? You could get cooties. Cooties aren't real. Yes, they are. My cousin got them, and she was in the hospital for a week. Nate, let's 
Let's go. I'm allergic to poor people. If I stay near that girl any longer, I'll get a rash. Pam grabbed Nate's arm and whisked him away. Nate looked back at me and winked. After that, every time I tried to talk to Nate, Pam showed up and acted like a maniac. I saw Nate outside at lunch, but when I approached him, Pam started screaming and threw herself on the ground to get his attention. Nate, help! Monster ants are eating me alive! Of course, Nate fell for her act. He rushed to her side, picked her up, and held her in his arms like she was an overgrown baby. She was beyond annoying. Later, Pam and her band of minions ambushed me in the bathroom. Hey, Subway girl, I'm getting really sick of you chasing after Nate. He's mine. Back off or else. You're the one chasing him like a lovesick puppy. And honestly, it's pretty pathetic. Get some self-esteem, girl. Oh, you're gonna regret that. Pam started jumping around like she was a boxer. I really don't think you want to do this. Ha! You're ugly and stupid. Can't you count? It's three against one. Pam charged at me like a raging bull. I stepped to the side, and she ran straight into her friend. The third minion ran up to me, and I threw water in her face. She slipped on her shoelace and fell on top of Pam. Pam and her minions ran to the principal's office and told the principal that I'd attacked them. But my AI glasses caught the whole thing on camera and sent the principal a video of the incident from an anonymous email account. Pam, your behavior is unacceptable, and I have no choice but to suspend you and your friends. Out of nowhere, one of Pam's bodyguards walked into the room, whispered in the principal's ear, erased the email, and left. On second thought, sorry, Pam. You and your friends did nothing wrong. Please enjoy the rest of your day. What the fudge? Then the principal sent me to detention. And by the time I got out, the school day was over and I couldn't find Nate anywhere. God, I needed that necklace desperately. I checked his social media and saw that he was out partying at Pam's mansion at a nightclub and raced around the city in a limousine. Pam's bodyguards were stuck to them like glue and her driver was guarding Nate's backpack like a hawk. I couldn't go near it without raising an alarm. It was almost 3 o'clock in the morning when Pam's driver dropped Nate off at home. I was so tired from following them around all night that I could barely keep my eyes open. I parked my car to rest my eyes, but I must have drifted off to sleep, because when I woke up it was morning and Agent Mama Bear was glaring at me from the passenger seat. I thought you were working! Ah! Ah! Oh, oh, oh! Here, here you go. Uh, as fresh as a daisy. Um, uh, I was working. I just dozed off. We don't have time for naps. You can't let Mr. X get that locket before you do. Anyway, I've got some fresh information. Agent Mama Bear told me that Nate's dad was holding a fundraiser at his house tonight. The mission was for me to enter Nate's house dressed as a maid, grab the locket, and leave. And Agent Mama Bear was my backup. We changed into our disguises and walked right up to Nate's front door. The guards let us in without a hitch. When the time was right, I went around the house looking for Nate's room and finally found it. I slid inside like a fast ninja and immediately spotted Nate's backpack. I opened it, searched for the locket, but it was gone. I panicked. How could this moron lose the locket? I turned the room upside down but couldn't find it anywhere. I glanced out the window. Nate was lounging near the pool, sunbathing his six-pack with a stupid smile on his face. Gosh, he's so cute. Nope, nope, nope. Get a grip, girl. I rushed down the stairs, and just as I was about to step outside, I saw a tired old woman scrubbing the floors, and then I saw Nate walk in. I immediately hid behind a pole to avoid getting spotted, while Nate walked over to the old woman with an envelope of cash in his hand. Ma'am, please take this money and use it to go see the doctor. I can't, sir. I have to work to help your father with the party. If I leave, he'll be very upset. Don't worry about my dad. I'll talk to him. Come back when you're feeling better. The old woman thanked Nate and left. I was shocked. I'd never seen him act so selfless. I was about to say something, then Nate's father rushed past me. Have you lost your mind? No, it's where I left it this morning. This isn't funny. I saw what you did for that maid. You think money grows on trees? I swear you're as dim as a broken light bulb. Try not to embarrass me tonight in front of Pam's dad. And why haven't you asked Pam to be your girlfriend? By now, you should be engaged. Marrying that girl will make you filthy rich, and then you can invest a ton of money into my business. Dad, I don't want to marry Pam. She's a nice girl, but I'm not interested in her that way. I didn't ask you for your opinion. You're too simple to make good decisions. You just focus on throwing your football and staying in shape and getting that girl to fall in love with you. Nate's dad stormed off, and the look on Nate's face almost broke my heart. I felt so guilty for treating him so badly before. I walked over and put my hand on Nate's shoulder. I don't think you're stupid. What you did for that old woman was really sweet. You don't have to be nice to me. 
My dad will still pay you. It's me, Grace. Who? Grace! We met on the train. Jeez, we've even kissed twice. Once by mistake. Yeah, yeah, I know. Why are you dressed like a maid? I couldn't recognize you at all. That was the idea, dummy. And why do you act all self-absorbed at school when you're actually kind of sweet? Did you just give me a compliment? Must be my lucky day. Well, not really, because I'm about to kick your butt too. I need that butterfly locket I hid in your backpack when we met. It's really, really important. Where is it? What butterfly necklace? I didn't have a choice but to tell everything to Nate. He heard everything and then looked at me in shock. Why would you slip something that important in my bag? I'm literally the clumsiest person you'll meet. Yeah, I wasn't thinking straight then. Oh, did my good looks distract you from your mission? Yeah, maybe. Can we talk about that later? I really need to find that necklace or my boss will have my head. Wait, wait. I think I saw Pam wear something like that a few days back. Nate showed me Pam's Instagram account, and I immediately spotted the picture where she was wearing that butterfly necklace. I asked Nate to call Pam and ask her to come for the fundraiser wearing that necklace. She should be here soon. Pam and her dad are the guest of honor. What do we do next? We get ready to pull off the heist of the century. Okay, that might be an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. Pam was really late, and we were beginning to think she wouldn't even come. But she finally arrived, along with her dad and an entourage of guards. And thankfully, she was wearing the necklace. She immediately walked up to Nate, gave him a peck on his cheek, and my insides felt on fire. What the heck was this feeling? Nate, this necklace is divine. I found it in your backpack when I was going through your things. I just had a feeling you might have a present for me. Yeah, about that. That necklace is, uh, dangerous. No, it's poison. It will make you break out in hives. You'll get pimples on your face. It will be totally disgusting and gross. You'll give nightmares to small children. Pam yanked off the necklace and threw it on the ground. Before I could get to it, Pam's dad sprang into action, but Agent Mama Bear got in his way. Not so soon, Mr. X. You're busted. Grace, quick, grab the necklace and run. I did exactly that, but a bunch of guards got in my way. I grabbed a vase and hurled it at a guard and then burst out my martial arts moves. I threw five spinning back kicks, an open fist punch, and a couple of elbows that laid the guards out cold. Agent Mama Bear called for reinforcements to haul Pam's dad off to jail. I had no idea what happened to Pam and her mom, except that they moved somewhere very far away. The president thanked me, Nate, and Agent Mama Bear for our spectacular service and even named a special holiday after us. Nate's dad cried at the ceremony and apologized to Nate for underestimating him. I was promoted to a first class agent and Nate was invited to join the super secret agent training program. I delivered his invitation myself. So now that you've been a hero, what's next? I think I want to finish high school here. I knew it. You love me. You can't resist my pecs. Or is it that my brave heart or fearless spirit? If I was a 10 before, what does that make me now? 20? I'd give you a solid 4. What? I'm kidding. Sheesh. You had me worried. Then I pulled Nate close and kissed.